Welcome everyone to our 4th of July service. We're glad that you're here. We have so much to be thankful for. Uh, if you'll open your bulletin, we have a unison reading. It's a special prayer that we put together, and I used a few prayers that I came across, but in light of what's going on in the world today, and in light of uh, many of the Supreme Court decisions over the last few weeks, uh, I, I think these words in this prayer are something that we should really uh, take to heart as we read this together. Uh, my suggestion to you is to take this home today uh, and think about this and pray about it because there's so many beautiful aspects to this particular unison reading. So this is a 4th of July unison reading. It's really a 4th of July prayer of thankfulness. Let's read this together. It says this, Dear Lord, we remember today how blessed we are. We remember with gratitude all who sacrificed and gave their lives so we could have the freedoms we enjoy today. We pray for our country and our leaders. We pray for revival, repentance, renewal, healing and restoration for our country. May the changes we want to see begin with each of us. May we humble ourselves before you. May we live with the same faith, courage and convictions as those who founded and fought for our nation. We pray for all who wish to harm our country and we humbly ask for your blessing to be on the USA. In the name of Jesus, we ask these things. Amen. Thank you. Uh, Pastor John will be delivering the message today. It's a beautiful message. Independence from sin, the cross. Romans chapter 6, Pastor John. Thank you, Pastor Rob. Good morning. Good morning. Is everybody well today? Well, yes, we are. It is well with my soul. <clears throat> I, um, I had a hard time getting started with this. Um, because I was trying to do in my own power <laughs> what I shouldn't try to do in my own power because you can't. And, and I, had to, I, had to, I had to sit back and be quiet and just listen to God and listen to the Spirit. There is, there's no other way to do it. I wanted to preach on what I wanted to preach on, but well, it just it wouldn't work. I couldn't get anything. So I just stopped and listened, and the Spirit led me right to the cross. This is the most important, monumental, significant event to ever happen in human history. <clears throat> so we have to stop using our carnal minds and let the Spirit lead us. <clears throat> it works every time. The cross is significant to all people, believers and unbelievers. To the believers, it's simply John 3.16, God so loved the world, he sent his son. To the unbelievers, <clears throat> they just haven't come to know the truth yet. But they will. <clears throat> On my way to uh, my son's house, the last time we went, there's a gigantic billboard. I, I think it's, it's on Route 1 or one of the big highways. And it says, <clears throat> everyone is going to die and everyone is going to meet God. This is very true. <clears throat> so the cross becomes relevant also to the unbeliever. They are going to meet Jesus. But the difference between them and us, we meet him on his terms. They choose their own terms. And it's not going to work out well for them. <clears throat> and now a little history about crucifixion and the cross really crucifixion. It is believed that crucifixion was originated by the Romans six, in the 6th century BC <clears throat> and used up until the 4th century AD when Constantine outlawed it and made Christianity the, uh, the, uh, the law of the land. In Paul and Jesus' day, it was considered the most heinous means of execution there was. And the Romans had many, like the Assyrians and, and the, you know, the Romans, they, 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 they um, prided themselves in ki uh, killing people. It was so repugnant that it wasn't spoke about in polite company. That being said, Jesus dying on the cross is offensive or ridiculous to everyone. Paul put people in two groups. One group had two, two different factions. It was a stumbling block to the Jews, and it, was a ridic and it was ridiculous to the heathens. 
But to the simple, humble follower of Jesus, it was the power of God. 1 Corinthians 1, 18 and 19, he tells us, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. <clears throat> and, and he quotes Isaiah saying, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. Our intelligence cannot save us. It, it, it doesn't matter what, how smart you think you are. <clears throat> there, there's, a, there's a song that has lyrics in it. It says, it, it, talking about Jesus, it, it says, living, he loved us. So in living, he loved us. But he had to die in order to save us. He had to die on a cross to save us. <clears throat> This is really, really just spot on. By dying on the cross, he gave us the opportunity to live with him forever. Now we'll go to uh, Romans 6, 1, 4. It says, what shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. What more could we ask for? Well, we don't deserve it. We deserve judgment. <clears throat> this is the freedom and independence Jesus gave us when he willfully chose to die on the cross. He declared by his death and his resurrection, we who choose to follow him are independent of sin's control. This is not to say we are free from sin, because you are. we are not. The Romans 3.23, Paul tells us, we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. But if you choose to, you are free from its control over your life dead to sin, alive in Christ. The cross gives us new life, which we all need, um, you know, from this world that we live in. Sin's power is broken. Our sin-loving nature is buried. You are no longer under Satan's control. I use Satan and, and sin and sin as synonyms in, in this, too, so... Why is this so important? Because you can be certain that what Jesus did on the cross has broken the power of sin and the devil for all who believe. Satan was completely defeated the moment Jesus breathed his last breath. He said, it is finished. He died once for all. Satan is done. And I'm going to read a little bit more. If we have been united with him like this in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. For we know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been freed from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. Um, we, what, what this is really saying is we have to change. Jesus' life changes us. Uh, now, because of his death and resurrection, we can enjoy our new life in Christ. Evil desires, bondage to sin, our love of sin, died with him. Through faith in Christ, we have unbroken, unhindered fellowship with God and freedom from sin's bondage. In Ephesians 4.23, he says, we are, to be, to be, we are to be made new in the attitude of our mind. He tells us that in Romans 12, too, that we need to renew our minds. Well, we do. We need to renew our minds 
and 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 try to get out of this world and into the into this book. <clears throat> we need to put on our new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. <clears throat> And he goes on to list many sins that we are guilty of, and and we are and and we are now forgiven of if we choose to be. If we are still very vulnerable to ever to to these sins now, even after we've been sealed with the Spirit. I picked just one paracope out of what he said, and this is from Ephesians four twenty seven. It is very short. He says, "Do not give the devil a foothold into your life." Well, this is so true. And we all do it. <clears throat> if we do not deal with our sin prop promptly and correctly, we give the devil a way into our lives. You've heard that old saying, give him an inch and he'll take a mile. Well, I think the devil may have coined that because it's, it's what he does. You give him a little bit, he takes a little bit more. Do not yield to the devil. He is a formidable foe, very cunning, hard to spot he, he, he appears in places he, he, that are unimaginable that, that that you would never think in the garden of eden <clears throat> satan chose the craftiest of all the animals to deceive eve he knew exactly what to say to her and he knows exactly what to say to us so i say deal with your sin Another example in, in the book of Genesis is Joseph. Joseph entered uh, Potiphar's house and, and his wife uh, wanted to um, take advantage of him, let's say. What Joseph did was absolutely correct. He left. He ran. He ran from that sin. He dropped his cloak and he got out of there. That's what you must do to get away from the devil and sin. James 4, 7 says, Submit yourselves to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come near to God, <clears throat> and he will come near to you. Do not try to re resist the devil in your own flesh and carnality. You will lose every time. Prayer, the word, the spirit are your only chance. He, 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 he's a, the devil is a, is a tough one. He, he, he's, he's very smart. In verse 8, it says, Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. That's refreshing. Uh, I mean, we all, we all, you know, that's the end game as a Christian. You want to live with Christ. The greatest thing, if you are a true follower of Christ and believe he was crucified and God resurrected him, you need not fear death. Just as God took Jesus to be with him, he's going to, he's going to receive us in the same manner. The Bible tells us that we're absent from the body and present with the Lord. In conclusion, I've given you only a smattering of reasons why Paul teaches us the importance of recognizing and dealing with our sin. This is why Jesus had to die on the cross. If we don't take our sin serious, as most of the world does not, I believe that we mock God. And we know that the Bible says God will not be mocked. So the way I say, see it, the ultimate Independence Day 2.0 is when there is no longer any sin in our lives. That's death. We have, we, have no, we, we have sin in our life until we die and go to be with the Lord. Or the second option, which is better, is a rapture. And then we're all going to go at the same time. But it's the same end result. It, it, it's what I'd rather do. <laughs> so you, you ask, you know, what... This, it, the cross freed us from sin. But we have to accept it for what it is, what Jesus did on the cross. You can, you can choose your own master. You can either choose sin or you can choose Jesus. Take your sin seriously because Jesus certainly did. This is, not, this is really not a request. It's a command. It's essential to your walk 
with the Lord. <clears throat> and I, I, I've said this the last time I preached. We, we can't emphasize the red letters in the Bible more. These are the words of Jesus. And, and I'd, like to, I'd like to leave you with this. This is an encouraging note. After all that talk about sin. It actually has very much to do with sin. In the, uh, in the book of Revelation, in chapter 3, he's speaking, this is Jesus speaking to the, to the, uh, the church at Philadelphia. He says, Since you have kept my commands to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come upon the whole world to test those who live on the earth. But this is, this is the, the important part. He says, I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. He's talking about Satan. Take the, you have to hold on. <clears throat> and, and eventually we, we will all go to be with the Lord. If, 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 we, if we obey God, confess our sins, live a godly life, Jesus, has, Jesus promises us that. That, that we will go that we will go to be with him and live with the Lord <clears throat> forever uh, so I, I don't I don't know you know what more to say we just need to keep that cross in mind everything leads to the cross in the Bible from Genesis 3:16 right to the cross everything leads to Jesus and the cross it's the most significant thing to ever ever happen or ever will happen um, even Jesus, all Jesus' miracles, all of that, it's, it's more important. The cross is it. <clears throat> so with that, let's pray. Amen. Father, thank you for the spirit you have put in all of your people. Thank you for sending your son to die for us. And thank you for all you do in all our lives. <clears throat> thank you for giving me a godly wife who loves me. And we know that's not an always an easy for you. Thank you for Pastor Rob and the opportunity to teach your word. In Jesus' name, amen.